All right, welcome back. Still keeping focus on uh, the Supreme Court's ruling over the Bayelsa governorship elections. But we do have uh, Ebonlua Adigboroa, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, on the line as well. Uh, good morning, Ms. Adigboroa. Let's uh, uh, first, some part of that judgment reads, if I could just read from it. Uh, it says that um, first, yes, they set aside the uh, earlier ruling by the court and now by the trial court. And then this here reads that um, the fourth respondent, that's INEC, shall withdraw the certificate of return issued to the second and first respondent and issue certificate of return to the candidate who had the highest number of lawful votes cast in the governorship election who also had the requisite constitutional of geographical spread. The parties bear, of course, they'll go ahead and bear their respective costs. So from your perspective, by this judgment, does this now give INEC the uh, legal grounds to withdraw that certificate of return and issue it to the PDP candidate? Do you, from your perspective, think that they have met the requisite spread and then scoring the highest number of valid votes cast. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first of all, let me correct uh, one part of the judgment you have just read. Paragraph 3 of the judgment of the Supreme Court uh, says that the judgment of the Federal High Court in Bayesa State delivered uh, on the 12th of November 2019, which voided the candidature of the APC uh, candidate has been reinstated by the Supreme Court. But the most important part of that judgment says that the joint ticket of the first and second respondent, that is Lyon and the deputy, sponsored by the first respondent, which is APC, was vitiated by the disqualification of the first respondent. That both candidates disqualified B and are hereby deemed not to be candidates at the governorship election conducted in Bayelsa State. So what it means is that the Supreme Court voided the candidature of the APC candidates, the, the, the governor-elect and the deputy governor-elect, which means in the eye of the law, they never partook in the election. They were not candidates in the election. So all the votes cast for them at that election are deemed not to be part of the election as from yesterday. So what it means is that the votes that were uh, uh, cast, the votes cast in favor of the APC candidate do not amount to any vote in law. Now what happened before yesterday was that the total lawful vote cast in that election was 499,551 out of which APC is called 353-552. So if you take 353-552, which has been voided by the Supreme Court yesterday, from 499-551, what you have left is 145,999. So which means, as from the day that the Supreme Court delivered the judgment yesterday, the total lawful votes that will be counted for the Bayesha governorship election is 145,000. 999. And that's the 25%. 145,199. PDP is called 143,172. So what I next should do is to calculate 25% of 145,999, which is the lawful votes recognized by the Supreme Court. It is, oh, you it, cannot it, take 25% of votes already voided by the court. There's no need to, to create any ambiguity in this. It's, for, it's so unfortunate. In other words, Mr. Abif, I could jump in. So those who were making a point that, or suggesting that the PDP candidate didn't meet the spread were predicating that on the premise that the votes cast for the APC candidates stood and that they were candidates. But now that you've said, look, from the point of law, they never partook in it in the first instance. So all of those votes associated with them don't even matter. So hearing, INEC you have to issue him certificate of return. That's your point, isn't it? Yes, there's no ambiguity in that at all. You cannot calculate 25% of what has been voided by the court because to void something means it does not exist. 
the law does not recognize those votes. They are void. The calculation of the election of Bayesa State will be as from yesterday. The remaining lawful vote cast, anybody that scores the highest and missed 25% of that lawful vote, which is 145,000, is deemed to be the governor of Bayesa State. And that is the PDP candidate. There's no need for ambiguity. There's no need for politics. There's no need for scheming. I do not agree that court should be imposing candidates on parties. Uh, I, like I Wait said, then, or well, what is your impression then? Because you heard uh, uh, APC, I mean, the national chairman and some of the other persons talk about how they were going to uh, study the judgment. I think they said they had instructed their lawyers to take a look at all of those with a view to challenging and taking the very next steps. Now, having seen all of this, what options do you think will be open for them to challenge if they want to? I think that already, as we saw in Imo State, uh, the PDP is challenging the election and also the judgment of the Supreme Court and asking for a review. In the same way, the APC can also go back to the court and ask for a review. But the point that we make is that there's no need for crisis, there's no need for ambiguity. The chairman of APC does not wear the garb of a judge. He cannot give a directive to counter the decision of the highest court of the land. And I think the lesson we should learn from this is that utterances from public officers who hold high positions of authority should be careful how they speak to cases, how they speak to judges. Because you remember that when this case started in Bayelsa State, and the Federal High Court in Yenagua nullified the candidature of the APC candidate. A very prominent politician in that case called the judge a harlot. You remember what happened? Instead of them to face the consequence of that judgment, you know, and what you should learn the, the lesson of impunity. I think it's important that all those who are in power should restrain themselves to continue to act lawfully and follow the path of law to challenge decisions that are not favorable. What yeah. is being done in Imo State can also be repeated in Bayesa State and ask the Supreme Court to review it. But as of today, the candidate that has met that qualification, that criteria set by the Supreme Court, is the one who must be sworn in. There is no ambiguity in it. We should not create crisis at all. The law for vote to be calculated. Now, I, I know that today is shaping up to be a big day for Bielsa State, whichever way it swings. And from your perspective, because a lot of people are anticipating what would happen. Will the speaker be sworn in? Will the candidate of the PDP be sworn in? A lot of possibilities people are putting out there. But what do you think should happen or would happen today as it regards Bielsa State? I believe that as soon as INEC resumes its duty this morning in the office, it should call upon the candidates of the People's Democratic Party and issue a certificate of return. And the chief judge of Bayesha State should swear in that candidate. If there is anybody who is aggrieved by that decision, the option is to go back to the court. We cannot be interpreting the judgment of the Supreme Court in the uh, office of political parties or that of INEC. The judgment is clear. The votes of the candidates that scored the highest has been voided. You cannot calculate 25% of what has been voided. It is the remaining votes that are lawful that you take 25% from. That is what the law is. Section 287 of the 1999 Constitution says that all orders and judgments of the Supreme Court should be obeyed by all persons and authorities in Nigeria. There is no ambiguity in this at all. It's not the speaker that should be sworn in. There's no vacuum in bias at stake. I may not agree with the judgment, as I have said, but the option is for us to comply with it first, and then we can challenge it later. There is also the argument out there that this shouldn't ever have happened at all in the first place because it was supposed to be a pre-election matter. So a pre-election matter is now determining the going forward of a state. How do you react to that? Honestly, for me, based on the amendments that have been affected by the National Assembly in terms of time to determine pre-election cases. I believe that judges, and especially our courts, should ensure that 
any matter that may affect the lives of people should be determined timelessly. And I think it was a little bit challenging to have allowed this case to linger to the very day uh, of the swearing in, because the other party had already taken steps. Invitation card had gone out, preparations had gone out, a lot of phone had gone, and this case was pending. So it should have been determined earlier than now so that people would know their fate and avoid the kind of suspense that we have now. The second thing is this. I, I believe in my heart that the people of Bayesa State rejected the People's Democratic Party in this election. From what I saw in the spread of the elections, 353 votes to 143,000. Clearly, for whatever reason, the people of Bayesa State made a choice to go with the APC. So we shouldn't allow the judiciary to become the forum whereby the wish of the people will be annulled. But it's unfortunate. The decision has come. We have to obey it. That is my own position. But it's quite unfortunate. So uh, I, I recall that you recently said that this judgment is an indictment on INEC. Now, this is the second major upturning, if I may use the term we're seeing, in the year. How do you mean by this is an indictment on INEC? It's an indictment on INEC when you get this kind of situation where tribunals, courts are avoiding elections. It shows clearly that it, it was a process that was flawed. The quantum of cases that got to the court from these elections, over 1,000 cases, is clearly an indictment on the umpire as to the process of that election the nature of the election and the transparency of that election. So I believe that if people had proper conduct, no violence, no manipulations, it would be easy to get satisfied with the outcome of election. People would pick their telephone and call the other party and congratulate them and, congratulate them and accept defeat. So I say it's an indictment on INEC because we have gotten worse in our experience in electoral uh, uh, processing now, with the kind of manipulations we've seen, with the kind of uh, 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 rigging that has been going on, I believe that INEC has not done enough. Secondly, I also said that the president, given the kind of electoral injustice he claimed to have suffered whilst he was contesting elections in 2003, has not done enough to be able to leave any legacy of electoral reform for us because he's benefiting from it and has continued to allow this flawed system to linger. Because there's no legacy the president has left, given what happened in Bayesa, given what happened in Koki State, given the violence that we see uh, following all electoral contests in Nigeria now. It's unfortunate. And I think the president should match his word with action when he said he would love to leave a legacy of electoral reform. And that is quite unfortunate. That's, that's what I mean by it. it's an indictment on INEC, it's an indictment on the president, and also an indictment on political parties. Now, some will say that that's perhaps dependent on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, which is still at the National Assembly. Perhaps when it gets to the executive, then we can begin to say, well, it's in the hands of the president. But just one more thing. Ever since this uh, judgment came out, people have been referring to the Emo judgment, and they've been trying to look at similarities. From what you have seen so far, is there any basis for comparison between this one and what we saw happen in the case of Emo State? Well, like you mentioned earlier, this case is not about the merit of the election, uh, whereas that of the most election was a decision based on the merit of the election. The Bayesa case is a matter of the election, about the, a candidate who has emerged with uh, multiple identities, and the political party had enough time to be able to take action to either substitute him, because it's so unfortunate that the uh, scene of a deputy is affecting the uh, merit of the governor himself, who was voted by the people of Bayesa State. So I blame the political party. Having seen the handwriting on the wall, should have taken steps to substitute the candidate before the election. So uh, there's no similarity between Imo and Bayesa, from my own point of view, in the sense that Bayesa is a matter of uh, some kind of flaw from the political party, whereas 
that of Imo State is based on the election itself.